I thank the organizers uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk to all of you. And uh, this is my second or third visit here. I am very happy to be here because during my last visits, this department was just growing hardly two, three people. And now I am very impressed. All of our young colleagues have put together a wonderful conference uh, activity, and uh, it is a thriving department. I wish them all the best. And uh, I'm happy to be here and excellent arrangement. So I thank all of you and uh, I really enjoy uh, the lectures uh, and also the, the discussions after the lecture. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about uh, the recent work which I have just got into after this uh, Indo-French project for the past three four years. So I'm not an uh, really I don't know much in this field, but a little bit whatever I have started working, I'll be explaining to you because it is exciting. Um, Not this one. Uh, there was one. Uh, All with this. Oh. Uh, maybe I can use this. Yes. That's just for pointing. It doesn't work. Okay. Uh, then I. This. I'm not sure which button should work. Yeah. Let me see. It's not working. Maybe this. No. This doesn't work. work. Ah, you have the okay. Yeah, I just got it. Does it work? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, forward. No. Scroll. Uh, which is scroll? This one. Good. <coughs> Okay, so. Ah, yes, it works, it works. This works. Hello, Borker. <laughs> so, this is the TFR Center. Most of you may be aware uh, or you have visited, and uh, I hope you will be able to come sometime. Yes. So, thank you. This one. This one. This one is pointing and this one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So this work uh, came out of this Indo-French project uh, recently ended 3701 and uh, the collaborators are uh, Jean-Pierre Raymond who was giving the lecture in the morning and uh, the students from TIFR CAM who are present here, Shishendu Chaudhary, uh, Debayan Maiti and Debanjana Mitra. So let me start with the problem. Uh, this uh, is the Navier-Stokes equation for viscous compressible fluid in an interval in R. Uh, this describes the behavior of the density rho and velocity v as a function of x and t. x is in the interval uh, in uh, real line and t positive. So you see this is a d by d, the time derivative of rho and this is the x derivative space derivative of uh, rho v. And uh, this is uh, Vt is the time derivative of velocity and v, Vvx is the nonlinear term exactly like in the Navier-Stokes equation. This is the derivative of the pressure and uh, this is the nu is the, the viscosity coefficient uh, in front of the diffusion term. And here is the, this uh, new positive is the fluid viscosity. And we assume that the pressure satisfies the constitutive law, it is a power law for uh, rho power uh, gamma with gamma greater than or equal to 1. 
so this sorry temperature i assumed to start with uh, isothermal so temperature i dropped at the end i will tell you about uh, temperature including the temperature what happens okay so as he rightly pointed out i should have added the temperature equation but uh, hmm? full screen okay i just wanted to say what the i uh, the outline is this i'll after the in introduction i'll give the scope of our work then linearization because the only thing we could uh, try with the linearized equation so the linearization around uh, zero velocity and uh, constant density otherwise non zero velocity and not and then some extensions there i'll talk about uh, well, the temperature so full screen yes okay is it clear now uh so the this is much less studied than the incompressible case uh, probably because of the difficulties uh, it is first of all it's a coupled system the first one is uh, like transport uh, type equation the second one is a parabolic type equation and uh, the non linearity is also uh, troubling us so there are some existence and uniqueness results known from the russian group of uh, kazikov and his co-workers and also smaller and half have some of the existence results in 1d 1d is better understood there are some results again by kazikov and others in 2d and also in higher d under some restrictions so so what is our strategy to so our, we wanted to know what are the control aspects of this system so the uh, scope of our work is we wanted to linearize the system at least first to start Start with around constant steady states so velocity and density are constants and uh, around that linearized system with suitable boundary conditions if we can get an idea of the spectrum and also the fourier basis and then we may be able to reduce it to the finite dimensional analysis and we can say something so then we wanted to study the controllability questions in particular interior and boundary null controllability and approximate controllability and we wanted to know the aspects of stabilizability all this for the linearized system if we have information we wanted to pass it on to the local stabilizability of the full nonlinear system so this is our uh, plan so let um, yeah before proceeding i wanted to say something about uh, what is known in the literature local exact controllability recently there was a result of uh, amasova um, it's uh, for the full nonlinear system and using interior control only on the velocity but the initial density is assumed to be already on the targeted trajectory so you are controlling only the velocity profile using an interior control for the velocity and the initial condition is in a regular space i think the control is also very regular so the another uh, recent result which uh, is a nice result which appeared in archives of rational Mechan mechanics and analysis by silver nervadoza glass guerrero and uh, puel this uh, is uh, similar to this local exact controllability but any uh, both starting from uh, there is two near the constant steady states, states again rho bar v bar with rho bar positive and v bar not equal to 0 in a bounded domain which is very similar to the case we are studying except that it's the full non linear system now and they use two boundary controls our aim was to use one boundary control or one interior control just for the velocity can we control so when and here the initial conditions are regular something like h3 so let me go to the problem the domain i am taking it to be 0 pi and uh, this is the constant uh, steady state solution which is uh, q0 positive v0 maybe 0 or positive and we linearize the original uh, navier stokes system around this constant steady state to arrive at this 
so we could put an interior control in the form localized at an open in an open set o f into chi o o is a subset of omega or it could be in the form of a boundary control acting on one of the boundaries or both the boundaries q0 and q1t will be the boundary controls which we could apply at, at the ends at z x equal to 0 or x equal to pi now, if you put uh, V0 is strictly positive, as you know, for this transport equation, we will need some additional boundary conditions for rho at that. And uh, the F is going to be the uh, internal control. It could be localized and the boundary <laughs> controls are uh, Q0, Q1. So now we would like to put it in a function space framework and then uh, try to use some of the analysis available and then see, ask the questions. Okay. So I want to use uh, the function space which is L2 cross L2. So that my density and velocity I am searching in this L2 space. Omega is 0 pi. And I, we put the inner product uh, with some weights so that I finally can write a nice maximal monoton operator using uh, in this uh, domain. So, A is a dense subspace uh, where I, uh, um, sorry, the domain of A is going to be the dense subspace defined in this way where uh, this is, uh, I should not put a rho x, uh, yeah, the ux which is in z which is L2 cross L2 where the second component is in h10 of omega and a combination of first and second should be in h1 of omega. So, if you take this kind of uh, domain then uh, this is the case when v0 is 0 and uh, the a operator a is going to be this because now you see v0 has dropped off and the domain of A is dense and A is going to be maximal monoton and then we could apply the semi-group theory to say that uh, since minus A DOE is going to be the infinitesimal generator of C0 semi-groups ST on Z. So that will give me the existence and uniqueness for the solution if I put it in this form my capital U is going to be the, the couple rho and U density and velocity. So, this is my operator A uh, which I described in the previous uh, slide. Initial uh, condition is uh, for rho naught u naught which lives in the space L2 cross L2. So, we can conclude there is a unique solution corresponding to every initial condition in this space which is uh, possible. Now, what we could do is, yeah. Yes, that is the, uh, the difficulty here. We under the smallness of perturbation, yes, it does. We will come to that at the end. Yeah. For the linearized system, this is only a perturbation. So, perturbation could be positive or negative, but it should be bounded below the constant steady state. Yeah. Yes. You are right, the serious problem is uh, formation of cavities. Um, okay, so what we tried to do was uh, look for some special solutions. Sin nx, cosine nx, uh, the, the combination works. So the zero boundary condition for the velocity implies the second component can only be sine nx and then we get uh, the rho can only be cosine nx. So if you form the space which is the span of this kind of functions, you can easily show this space is invariant under the operator A and uh, hence we could find uh, these A restricted to Vn, we could find a matrix representation and that will be the An operator and then we could find the eigenvalues of those Ans. So that is how we analyze this. So I have to also mention this Z is going to be the orthogonal sum of all these subspaces starting from 0 to infinity and notice that V0 is the constant where rho equal to constant. So, that will be really in the null space of A. So, since only the derivatives of rho appear, so constants are always solution for this uh, system. This 1, 0 will be in the null space of A. So, Z0 which will be in the, the orthogonal sum of the rest of the Vns will be given like this. These are constants uh, eliminated because the average is uh, 0. 
then I describe the spectrum uh, point spectrum of uh, A. So this is going to be a finite number of uh, complex eigenvalues. So, so here, here I have to give a picture. Uh, so first I describe the pairs of complex eigenvalues. As I described, the, we found the eigenvalues of uh, A n s and then we put together for all uh, n and then that gives us this behavior. So, this <coughs> real uh, part is always bounded away from this, for, uh, the negative part is bounded also. The infinite number of uh, pairs of two eigenvalues, one will be uh, converging to a finite, uh, uh, finite number and another one will be uh, diverging to infinity. Uh, here I am describing A, but actually we will be working with uh, minus A is the operator. So, the spectrum lives in the negative side. I will try to draw here. Uh, let me see if I can describe the... So, I am describing the spectrum of minus A. So, that will be the... There will be some finite number of uh, complex eigenvalues. Well, then there will be uh, this omega naught minus omega naught is going to be the limit point of a sequence of uh, eigenvalues which I describe as lambda n, the minus lambda n in this case. So, this could be minus lambda 1 and minus lambda 1 bar etc. And there is another sequence which I call minus mu n which is going to uh, infinity, minus infinity when I describe for minus e. So, the eigenvalues also can be described and they are, as I described they are going to be a combination of cosine nx and sin nx, this can be calculated. So, once we know this uh, eigenfunctions, they form the orthogonal, orthonormal, I mean uh, normalized uh, to orthonormal sequence and then we are able to analyze the controllability question. So, what is the question? Now, we want to ask. Can we bring the linearized system to rest in time t by controlling only the velocity? There are two components, density and velocity. So, if we control only the velocity, <coughs> can we bring it to zero? That is why I am choosing the internal control capital F to be zero comma F. So, no control for the density and only control for the velocity. Where if we expect it to live in L2 of zero infinity L2. So, using the Fourier basis in Z0, I am going to write them as only in uh, combination of phi 2 n, n minus 1. You see only the second component is uh, living, that is why I have only the odd uh, indices, no even indices available because this component is 0. So, the idea was, okay, so the question is uh, clear now, I start from any point. Can I bring the capital U of t to be 0 after uh, some time? So, what is the, the method? So, when the basis is available, we can do many things. First of all, we can try building a control. And so, one way is to project the system on finite dimensional spaces. We have the summation, the orthogonal sum of all the Vn's is going to be our whole space Z0. So, suppose we project the system on finite dimensional spaces and if the finite dimensional system is controllable, uh, we saw in earlier uh, lectures of Remo that uh, you had the Gramian in terms of the Gramian, you can write uh, the, the minimal norm control using the optimal control theory. So, I have an expression and uh, using that will be, we will be able to sum up under some condition and will it give the control for the full space. So, that is what is the uh, idea involved. So, let us project the system to uh, each Vn. Vn, remember Vn's are all finite dimensional spaces uh, spanned by cosine 2x, 2nx 0 and 0 uh, sin 2nx. So, in that system, the operator B control operator is going to be 0, 1 times P and T because we have control only for the second component. The initial condition will be the projection of the original initial condition onto this space Vn and then we want to know what is whether uh, uh, this finite dimensional system which is going to be now 2 by 2 system. Now, this is easy to check. We have several conditions uh, like Kalman rank condition and other things to check and it is easy to find out this finite dimensional system is controllable. So, once it is controllable, 
we are able to write down the expression for the minimum norm control using the Gramian WT like this. Okay. So, this An is A restricted to Vn. Okay. So, once I have this expression and uh, remember ANs are all, uh, I have the expression for ANs because these are 2 by 2 metrics, uh, the action of A on the space Vn. So, we will be able to estimate all the uh, components Fn and then check whether they are summable or not in L2. So, for that I need some more estimates. So, I call this uh, expression whichever was appearing here, this whole thing as I call a C and that Cn uh, is this uh, expression for which I am going to get the estimates now. So, the minimum norm control is this uh, Cnt acting on the initial vector u0n where Cnt is this vector C1t, C2t of course it depends on n. So, that is where the estimation is needed because the eigenvalues will appear as uh, multipliers somewhere and I know the behavior of the eigenvalues as I described one sequence converges so it is bounded the other sequence uh, diverges to infinity. In fact, we can say it diverges like uh, n square. So, I have precise estimates for those eigenvalue behavior. So, using that I can estimate the C and T. And uh, this is the behavior using the behavior of eigenvalues. I could say that C1t behaves like this and C2t behaves like this uniformly with respect to t in 0 capital T. And using this, now we will be able to say when the whole thing will be summable in L2. Uh, so, I want f in L2 of 0 infinity for each for each t the x variable should be in the as a function of uh, x it should be in L2 of omega. This will happen if and only if this norm is summable for all n ranging from 0 to infinity and this will be summable remember fn was given by c1 acting on the initial uh, vector and c2 acting on the second component of the initial vector. So, this must be summable. Now, C1 and C2t I just showed you in the previous slide how they behave. One is uh, n times exponential and uh, the other is just exponential. So, C2 is bounded whereas C1 is uh, behaving like uh, n. So, that gives me that C1 multiplying this, this should have a better behavior or this should be in H1m. Okay, that is uh, the what I denote by H1m is the uh, H1 space with uh, L2 average uh, 0. Okay. So, using this we can announce the theorem that for t positive the system is null controllable in time t using interior control f which is in L2 of 0 infinity L2 of omega if and only if the initial condition resides in this good that is the first component must be in a better space than L2 where H1 of m omega I describe here that is the average must be 0. Now, then we continued further what about uh, boundary null controllability, what about interior null controllability localized in a set, all this was not possible. So, in this case this is optimal in the sense that the system is not null controllable using any boundary control or an interior control acting on a subset of omega. So, the, the moral of the story is that the system is not very well behaved with respect to controllability question. So, let me go to the next case. Here I try to linearize around V0 where V0 is not 0. Remember the earlier case was linearization around uh, V0 equal to 0. So, now the question is uh, what happens to this linearized system? A similar study can be done. So, for this linearized system we tried with first with periodic boundary condition in the interval 0 to pi just because we could find uh, the good eigenfunctions and uh, then we could do the same uh, splitting of the spaces into eigenspace and uh, or the, um, I could get the orthogonal sum of all the spaces and we could repeat a similar analysis. So, what is the picture now? So, I have to again explain the spectrum uh, a little bit. So, again the spectrum of minus a. So, here I am talking about the spectrum of minus a which again lies on the left side of the complex plane exactly like in the previous case. There are again infinite number of two pairs of complex eigenvalues and uh, no accumulation point in the spectrum. 
So this is the main difference. Earlier, you re recall there was an accumulation point in the spectrum. Now there is no accumulation point in the spectrum. Uh, the absolute value of, of the eigenvalues go to infinity. So one pair of eigenvalues was uh, going to minus infinity and the other pair was going to plus and minus infinity with the, the entire thing was complex. So I have to draw a picture here. So this is the case for um, linearization around uh, the constant density, zero velocity. And uh, this is the case for constant density and non-zero uh, velocity. Both are constants anyway. So here it was, uh, if I remember right, there was still this minus omega not playing a role, but what happened was, this was, uh, so the eigenvalues now are uh, the imaginary uh, parts are non-zero. The real part was converging to minus omega naught. The imaginary part was going to plus and minus infinity. That is one sequence. The other sequence was going to uh, infinity like this. The real part was going to in minus infinity. The imaginary part was also going to uh, infinity in this way. Okay. So the entire spectrum was uh, uh, complex, but the accumulation point has uh, is not there. So in a way, this is very different. This behavior is uh, somewhat different from here in the sense this is, um, uh, okay, so let me come to this, uh, first the analysis. So again, we have, we can work with the Fourier basis. And so the moment method, which is well known of, uh, the, that could be tried here. So when we tried this, this is the result we could uh, get. So this system is approximately controllable for t sufficiently large. In the earlier case, for any t, it was controllable. But of course, only if I control in the entire domain with a very regular control. Whereas here, uh, the t sufficiently large enters the picture, which is very typical of uh, um, hyperbolic type equations. You have to have some positive time interval before the wave or whatever passes through the domain. <laughs> And it is null controllable with regular interior control and also regular boundary control if t is sufficiently large. The exactly t is the length divided by the velocity v0. So if this is the result when you have some information about the spectrum because with the periodic boundary condition this was possible. Um, so now what happens if you do not know the spectrum and eigenfunctions, what can you say more? So that is the case, the linearized system, we go through the directly boundary conditions. We are not, no, no more sine and cosine, we can use and we did not know the knowledge of the spectrum. But you can still say something but uh, about approximate controllability. So O is uh, some uh, set 0 L, uh, 0 less than L. Uh, so the control is localized in this set. Then the system is approximately controllable in time t. Still the t must be larger. The t must be larger than some uh, number. That is precisely the length between the set where you are controlling. Capital L is the end, the total interval is 0 L. So L minus little L by the velocity v naught. So in that case, this must be little v naught, the same uh, uh, constant around which I am linearizing. So this proof uh, follows by showing that the adjoint problem uh, satisfies the unique continuation property if p is sufficiently large. So now we put together both the linearized system, we can contrast the behavior. So the model one, when the velocity was zero, the system behaved more like a parabolic system where uh, for any t, I had the uh, either the controllability or was available, but uh, only if you control all over the domain. In the model two, v0 strictly positive, then the system behaves more like a hyperbolic system where the t has to be sufficiently large in order to have any kind of controllability. Uh, approximate or uh, null controllability. 
So let I, let me summarize here uh, the linearized systems, systems controllability results. Now both systems are approximately controllable. Now what about boundary null controllability? The first model, no, that was linearization around uh, zero velocity. The second model, yes, but only with regular control. At least that is what the technique we know right now. We don't know whether uh, we can do it with uh, less regular control or not. Null controllable with localized interior control, the first model was no. And uh, the second model, yes, with uh, regular control. That is with when uh, you linearize around V0 positive. So now we move on to the next question. The, is the system stabilizable? That means as t tends to infinity, can we bring the system to rest using either interior control or uh, boundary control? Now, the spectrum is in the negative half space, uh, of course, that is not enough, but in uh, that could be used to show that it is stabilizable. The solution does uh, decay uh, like e power minus sigma t for 0 less than sigma less than minimum of gamma naught omega naught. I have to explain in the picture what are the gamma naught uh, omega naught. So, the gamma naught was uh, here the bound for all the spectrum, the entire spectrum lies beyond this, either this or this, whichever is the minimum. In the picture that I have shown, this uh, gamma naught was uh, less and uh, this was uh, little bigger. So, roughly in from the constants depending on the system, this will be like uh, the diffusion coefficient gamma and this will be more like the diffusion coefficient, some constant by gamma. So, if the diffusion coefficient is small, this is going to be close to 0 and uh, this could be a little further away. So, we would like to know whether uh, we can push the decay a little faster at least up to omega naught because between this and this, you are crossing only finitely many eigenvalues, not infinitely many. So, there is a hope that you could uh, accelerate the decay uh, or you can increase the decay rate. Uh, so that is the question we wanted to answer. If this, we know that uh, the solution decays like this, but can I improve the decay rate? So that was the question we tried to answer now. The linearized system is stabilizable at what rate of decay? So that is what we wanted to know. Uh, this uh, this is stabilizable with decay rate e power minus sigma t and up to omega naught. Assuming uh, gamma naught is less than omega naught, you could go all the way up to the accumulation point of the real eigenvalues of A. This is already done for some uh, system by Remo and his collaborators. Uh, what they do is, uh, since there are only finitely many eigenvalues which will be crossed between this point and this point, so they can be uh, the, the, the unstable. So, when we want to move the decay rate all the way to minus omega naught, what will happen is we want to shift the 0 to here. So, these uh, eigenvalues will become unstable eigenvalues or these are going to be positive when you shift the origin to this place. So, they can be controlled because anyway there are only finitely many of them. So, they have a method and the same method works here. So, this uh, is uh, possible. Now, then the question is can we go beyond minus omega naught? There as I told you the trouble is this minus omega naught is the accumulation point of a sequence of eigenvalues. So, there could be problem because as soon as I uh, move beyond minus omega naught, there are going to be infinitely many eigenvalues which will be crossed. Then what happens? So, this is what we try to analyze. Uh, so, the question is, can we stabilize with decay rate e power minus sigma t for sigma greater than or equal to minus omega naught, uh, greater than or equal to omega naught? So, what is the system? So, I have written it down here with the boundary control. And uh, it turns out that it is enough you control only on one side of the boundary. So, that is QT is uh, enough. So, we wanted to know if this can be brought to 0 or not. So, as I described, the difficulty here is there are infinitely many eigenvalues which are going to be greater than uh, uh, sigma because as soon as sigma crosses omega naught, 
omega naught being the limit point of the eigenvalues. So what we try to do is I just give the outline of the method. So again we try to write the system as an operator equation and then we project it onto the one dimensional eigenspaces because now we only project it onto these eigenvalues which are the eigenspace whichever is uh, becoming unstable. So there are now infinitely many. So if you can uh, project onto these one dimensional eigenspaces corresponding to the eigenvalues accumulating at omega naught and then we find the expression for minimal norm control stabilizing this one dimensional projections and then our hope was if this remains bounded as n tends to infinity or not that is what we tried to analyze and we tried to find the limit as n tends to infinity and it was blowing up and from there we conclude a negative result. So the ne negative result will be this that the system is not boundary stabilizable in Z0 with decay rate e power minus omega t for any omega greater than omega naught where omega naught is the accumulation point of the eigenvalues of A using the boundary control qt at x equal to pi for the velocity component for arbitrary initial conditions in Z0. So this way we have precise decay rate up to omega naught and not beyond. So that is the conclusion. So let me uh, uh, mention some of the other extension that we tried. As you pointed out, uh, the density, velocity and temperature also has to be included. The temperature equation is again of parabolic type. So we will have a, again a similar coupling between a par two parabolic equations and one uh, transport type equation. So the behavior was exactly like when I linearize around Q0, zero, zero, theta naught, the behavior was and the spectrum and everything was very similar to Q0, zero, zero. Or in the case, there was a accumulation point and uh, so the controllability behavior was bad, etc. So this behavior was like a parabolic system and nonlinear system. Yeah. So the full nonlinear system we, we are trying, we are studying now near the stationary solution rho naught zero. So the question is, uh, we know that it can be stabilized with a feedback control like the one uh, uh, Remo had mentioned and also in the morning talk uh, we saw numerical computation using a Riccati equation, feedback control if we can find corresponding to the linearized equation, we want to plug it into the nonlinear system. We hope if the calculations are right, we are just doing that and I think it is working. So we will be able to uh, stabilize the nonlinear linear system not only near rho naught 0 also near rho naught and a constant uh, velocity q naught uh, sorry v naught v naught positive. So this is uh, regarding the nonlinear system but in the calculations are still going on. Now what about higher dimensional system because all this was for one dimension. So we try to do just for a simple rectangle because uh, again Kazikov and uh, some uh, uh, collaborators have studied this nonlinear system in rectangle and we have some existence theorem. The nonlinear system is well posed. So we try to study the linearized system in this. So with suitable boundary condition, we could do the Fourier basis and uh, we can think of looking at the null control. But of course, everything is now very large. The dimensions of the eigenspaces are all huge. So, so the calculations are messy. So we haven't yet uh, completed this. But we studied an optimal control problem in the rectangle and then we would be able to justify, find the right space where to pose the optimal control problem and uh, prove the optimality system, etc. For this system in uh, two dimensions, of course linearized, we haven't yet gone to the non-linear system. Okay, so let me give the summary of the work. So it is linearized compressible Navier-Stokes equation. A coupled system of transport and parabolic equations. So if I linearize around velocity 0 and constant uh, density, it, the system behaves more like a parabolic equation. And if I linearize around a constant velocity, uh, positive velocity, it more behaves uh, like a hyperbolic system. 
So what are the other questions which we haven't yet touched? What about the computational aspect? Can we compute the feedback control or the optimal control? Uh, what about observers? And uh, we haven't even touched the linearized system at non-constant steady states. We don't know. Uh, what about the non-linear system behavior and the other coupled system? We have no idea. We have to still uh, look at these things. So out of this, uh, this Indo-French project and uh, the work of our students and uh, Remo, so this came out. Uh, so the first one was what I described on the optimal control in uh, two-dimensional rectangle. The second one is controllability and stabilizability. This is completely for the case uh, linearization around uh, Q0, velocity is 0. It has already appeared, I have been updated here. And uh, this one with uh, Shishendu and Debanjana, they have extended it to the case Q0 and where V0 is uh, strictly positive. So I end my talk here and uh, any questions I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Constant. The viscosity constant uh, sure. that could push the uh, the decay rate. It can uh, decay. So this um, uh, gamma is um, this omega naught can be pushed further depending on the viscosity coefficient. That's the precise expression that comes out uh, of the constant. So that way it depends. It tells you how fast the thing can decay. For stabilization. For stabilization, yeah. The spectrum can move to the right. The spectrum can move to the right, yes. 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 Sorry? So the model is not so the viscosity doesn't affect the spectrum to cross and create a periodic by the and things like that. It doesn't cross the uh, So the structure is preserved, huh? no? No, no, okay. no. New goes to zero. Right. Yeah. No. Then new goes to zero? Yeah, because that's the interesting limit, right? right. Uh, so not new becoming large, that's more stabilized. It's like the flow is becoming more like charge. Yeah. Uh, new goes to zero. Yeah. That's the, uh, that is the destabilized. Yeah. We haven't yeah. analyzed it. Um, because that will that could all uh, become Spectrum unstable. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's yes. Yeah. Yeah. Further questions? Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.